Okay, hello everybody. Well, today I am looking for one of the most bizarre creatures in probably the world, if I had to uh, say myself. And it just so happens that it's a salamander and it lives right here in West Tennessee. So I'm going to take y'all along for the journey and I have a really good feeling that we're going to find quite a few of these salamanders today. I'm at a really good spot for them. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get out into the wetland and see if we can find any. So the species of salamander I'm out here looking for today is called a three-toed amphiuma and you'll end up finding them in wetlands fairly similar to this one. They like swamps, bottomwood, hardwood forests, places like that where it gets nice and wet and there's a lot of leaf debris and stuff like that. So this is a salamander that not many people ever see. They're very unknown to the general public and a lot of herpers actually have a hard time finding these because of their secretive habits, but today I'm gonna show y'all how to do it, how to find them, my little secret. Uh, a lot of people have figured this out by now, but uh, I figured it out last year and it's worked fantastic for finding these and other aquatic species of salamander. So y'all ready for me to show you how to find the rare and elusive <laughs> amphiuma? That's how you do it. <laughs> it's really uh, not that complicated. What you do is you go to the edges of these wetlands that have a lot of leaf and uh, mud packets and you just go by and you can either use a rake, you can use your foot, but you basically just, you know, kick it up and with a little bit of luck and patience, you will end up finding one or more of these salamanders. So I'm gonna put all this back. That's another very important thing. Once you get done kicking up a specific area, you always wanna make sure you kick all that stuff back because it is habitat after all and you don't wanna destroy it. But yeah, I'm uh, gonna give it a little bit and hopefully with some time, I'll uncover some of these really awesome salamanders. So stay tuned. So I unfortunately was stupid like I usually am and forgot to bring a net. But just for your information, uh, if you want to be extra efficient with this, it's not a bad idea to bring a net with you because these things are very, very hard to grab with your hands. They're very slippery and, uh, you know, it's just easier to overall just store them in a net during the duration that you're looking at them and you can also catch them with the net too. But pro tip, you can uh, take it or leave it. Well, what about this? Oh, I think I just saw one. I do think I just saw one. Hold on. But that's the thing with these these guys is that you gotta act quick. All they've gotta do is dip down for like two seconds and they can get back in this muck. And I mean once they're back in this junk, I mean you've basically got no chance. You're not gonna you're not gonna catch them again. Well, I just had one right there. I saw it for like two seconds, but I think it got away. That's alright. I'm sure there's plenty, plenty more for me to find, so let's just keep going. No. Sometimes when you're sifting through the leaves afterward to get them back into the water, sometimes there will be one tucked up in the leaves that you just didn't see. So that's kind of what I'm looking for right now. Oh, there's one. There's one. Got one. Right here. There he is. It's a really, really small one, but this is it. This is a three-toed amphiuma right there. All right, well, there it is. That is exactly what I was looking for. This is a three-toed amphiuma. It's a very, very young one. So I've actually got this little aquarium, you know, box thing here. So I'm gonna fill it up with water and I'm gonna let y'all see it underwater because you can see its features much better when it's underwater. All right, so here it is. This is a three-toed amphiuma, like I said before. Now, I'm not gonna spend too much time with this one because I wanna get a slightly bigger one for y'all because it's really, really difficult to see the features with this one and I don't really know what's going on with this one. He's flipped upside down. He's pretty disoriented. I don't know what's going on with him, but uh, usually they're not like this, but I'm gonna go ahead and put him back and keep kicking through this and see if I can get a bigger one so y'all can really see their features better. But yeah, that's it, three-toed amphiuma. All right, so I'm just gonna put him back in his water here. And uh, keep going, see if I can get a bigger one that has more prominent features. Yep, this looks good too. Let's try this out. Oh, geez, that was a hectic one. Oh, there's one. This one's bigger too. There we go, that's what I'm talking about right there. Nice. This one is still small for the species, but it's bigger than the last one, and this one will be much better for y'all to get an idea of what this species looks like. Nice. 
All right, well here it is. This is a three-toed Amphiuma. And you can see what makes these salamanders so cool is that they are fully aquatic and they are completely cylindrical, almost like an eel or a snake. And a lot of people, when they see these, they think that's what they are. They think they're either an eel or a snake, but they're actually an amphibian. They're a salamander, despite them looking absolutely nothing like pretty much any other salamander people would think of. They're called the three-toed amphiuma because you can hopefully see on his little feet, he's got three toes on his front feet and his hind feet. And that's one of the things that helps you differentiate this species of salamander from something called a siren that looks a lot like this one. The amphiumas have limbs on their front half and on their bottom half, while the siren only has limbs on its front half and the bottom half is limbless. You can see up there by his head they have very strange looking pearly eyes. Herpetologists don't really think that they use their eyes as much as they use sensory organs that are up by their lips and on their feet and on the rest of their body. They, they mainly think that they use sensory organs that are located in those places more so than they use their eyes. So their eyesight is not typically known to be very good. But nonetheless, these salamanders, they get around, they thrive. And uh, mainly what they eat is crayfish, okay? They mainly eat crayfish, especially when they get bigger. These salamanders can get huge, all right? They can get four feet plus. They are massive salamanders when they get to their max length. This is actually a really, really small one, despite what some would think. But nonetheless, a fantastic creature, you know, a, a missing link, as a lot would say. You know, it's something about this uh, creature that is alien-like and, and just so unfamiliar that people uh, might look at this and think, wow, I, I can't even picture that that lives on Earth. All right, so I went ahead and let him go back in his muck hole right here, and I'm going to keep going and see if maybe I can't get a bigger one or just, you know, see how many I can find because there's tons of them out here, and when you find one, you're almost guaranteed to find a lot more. So let's just uh, go out there and see what I can do. All right. Yeah, it looked good. Always remember, put this stuff back. Always remember to do that. Because however yucky and mucky it looks, stuff does use this as a home, so you would hate to destroy that. It's a little pocket. Oh, there's one right there. Got it. Another little one right there. I'm not going to spend too much time with him because he's so small. But yeah, another one. There you go, bud. Oh, frog. Oh, oh. Now, another thing that you could find besides amphiumas and, and sirens when you're doing this is a mud snake, actually. You could definitely find a mud snake, and that is a snake I would very much love to see right now. You know, pretty much anywhere you get these amphiumas and sirens, you can get mud snakes, so always something to keep in mind. If you're finding amphiumas and sirens, then you've probably found a place that has mud snakes. And if you found mud snakes, then you've probably found a place where amphiumas and sirens live as well, because their existence is very synonymous with one another. Okay, this does look really good right here, though. You can see all these loose leaf packets. That is great for what I'm doing right now. <clears throat> Oh, oh my goodness. Yep, right there. Right there. Right there. Oh, geez. Where did he go? Where did he go? That was a much bigger one. Dang it. Uh, did I lose him? How did I lose that? Oh, right there. Right there. Got him. Oh, wow. This is actually a siren. This is the first siren I've seen at this spot. Nice. Yeah, let's get a look at this guy. This was the other salamander I was talking about. All right. Well, very nice. Go ahead and take a look at this. This is the other species of salamander I was talking about that looks like amphiumas but aren't. And this is called a Western Lesser Siren. And they, in most cases, live right alongside the amphiumas. And they can easily be confused with them except for some few key differences. And I'm gonna point them out here in just a second. So you can see on the siren they have these weird looking things up by their neck there and those are actually gills. They're external gills that they uh, use to exchange nutrients and such. They also do breathe air. They can come up through the surface of the water and kind of get a gulp of air. You'll see them do that a lot, especially when you have them in captivity. But uh, yeah, you can see those gills up by its neck. That is something that an amphiuma does not have. They do not have those gills. They lack them completely. And you can see that they also, these sirens, they have front legs. But once you go down their body, you'll see that they don't have any back legs. They only have front ones and they end in a tail like that. Very interesting little differentiation there. You'll also notice on the siren by its lip, 
It's got this, you know, this yellow bar that goes across its lip. The Amphiumas don't have that. They're pretty much the same color throughout their body, but the Siren, they have that yellow lip, and they've also got a little bit of speckling and mottling going along in their body while an Amphiuma stays pretty plain. But yeah, right there, that's a Western Lesser Siren. Very, very interesting little species of salamander. So let's go ahead and put him back real quick and see what else we can find. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get this guy back in his little puddle. Just gonna dump him back in. Oh, just gonna dump him right back in. And there he goes, gone, disappeared. Well, awesome, this is going great. I've got like, oh, uh, three amphiumas so far, I think, and that one siren that I've never seen at this spot before, so I don't know, who knows? Maybe I'll get a mud snake and I'll complete the trifecta. Who knows, we'll see. Got plenty of ditch or swamp or whatever you want to call this left, so let's get to it and maybe we'll turn up something else cool. All right. Right here. This is it. Can get something right here. Oh, something right there. Uh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Big Amphiuma. Right here, I got him. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh oh, come on. Right there. Oh gosh, these things are so hard to hold on to. Oh my goodness, look at this thing, guys. Still not that big in comparison to how big they can get, but not, not bad considering what I've been finding today. Look at this thing. Would y'all take a look at this animal? Yeah, right there. That's it, right there. Three-toed Amphiuma. There you go, isn't that not fascinating or what? I know y'all can't see it that well because of the stupid film that's on the top of the water because this water isn't that clear, but that's it right there. Now y'all can get a better look at it. Y'all can see its feet up in the front, and if you go down towards the bottom, y'all can hopefully, yep, there's the little feet at the back. They're very small. They're called vestigial limbs because people kind of think that they're really an evolutionary leftover. They don't really have that much of a purpose, a lot of people think. Some have argued with that and said that they do use them as a sensory organ. But, uh, you know, a lot of people think they're vestigial, so they don't really have a purpose. They're just there because when they were evolving, that was just something that kind of got left over in the process and didn't really uh, fully fall off or anything like that. The reason I said that these guys and mud snakes are very synonymous with one another is because sirens and amphiumas are just about the only thing that a mud snake will eat. So that's why if you're finding amphiumas and sirens, you can pretty reasonably assume that there's also mud snakes in the area because if that's their only food source, then that's probably where you're also going to find them as well. So, and I know that there are mud snakes in here. My friends have found them. I have never found one in here, but they are in fact in here, so... Maybe with time and patience, I might uh, get lucky like they were and find one myself. But yeah, there you go. Little three-toed Amphiuma. Perfect. Amphiuma means right there. How about that? All right, well, I guess the search continues. That is so cool, dude. Amazing animals. I mean, you, you really would look at that and think it's not from this world. I mean, it is absolutely unique amongst not just amphibians or salamanders, but all animals. I mean, they are truly spectacular. So let's keep going and see what else I can find. This looks good. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, man, this looks so good, guys. Oh, Amphiuma, right there. Nice. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm losing them. Oh, jeez. These things are some of the slipperiest animals in the world. God, they are so hard to hold on to. But there you go. Another one. I'm just going to let them be because I've already seen plenty of them. There you go, bud. Nice. All right, guys, well, I made it to the end of the little wetland section right over here. And I think I'm gonna call it a day. I mean, I've gotten, ah, uh, geez, I don't even know how many amphiumas at this point, like seven, eight, I don't know, enough. <laughs> and a siren. I mean, that's not something that happens very often. I didn't cap the trifecta with the mud snake, but I guess that'll just have to be for another video. So until then, I will see you all on the next one. Hope you all have a great day. Stay safe, and uh, yeah, I'll see you all later.